question says, evaluate. Evaluate the triple integral of x squared plus y squared plus z squared raised to negative three halves dv over over region d, uh, where it says d. First of all, it's located in the first octet. It is in the first octet bounded by two spheres. Okay, spheres it means that we can just study how coordinates with radius one and two. Here we go. Let's take a look at our graph. Let's visualize it. Here we go. So take a look at this. We have two spheres, two spheres. So in the first octet, it means that we're just looking at some portions, some portions of these two spheres. X is not negative, Y is not negative, Z is not negative. So these are the portions. One eighth of your sphere. Let us take a look at a better visualization. Here we go. So what do we have? We have these two spheres. This is the outside sphere. This is your inside sphere, okay? And you want to know what this portion of intersection is. What is this? Is our poster. Let's start here. Excellent. Here we go. So you want to know what is this shadow bounded between these two spheres in the first one? What is this? Okay, so here you have your x axis, here you have your y axis, and so take a look at these two little curves. Here we go. And here we have this one, two, two. I'm looking at this, I'm just projecting or shadowing this bit of this here. One, two, two. <laughs> What is this region? So if you want to have a better visualization, this is your x-axis, this is your y-axis. Remember that x and y, all of them are non-negative because we're in the first half. And here you have, this is the portion. One, two, two, one, two, two. So, we are using spherical coordinates. Coordinates. Spherical coordinates. In spherical coordinates, remember that you're using the rho. Rho is the distance between the point and the origin. So the first distance, if you take a look at this, the first distance, rho is one, then your row changes to two. So your row is in between one and two. How about your theta? Theta in x y plane ranges between zero and it stops at pi over two. This is your theta. Zero to pi over two. How 
mark your phi. Phi was the angle between the angle between your point and the positive part of the axis. So your phi is actually starts from zero and it starts at phi over two. Just rotates this much. It travels this much from zero to phi over two. This is the one. Phi zero to phi over two. Okay, we're ready to set up our triple integral. So our triple integral says, hey, you have triple integral of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Remember that rho squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So I'm going to start with that here. I have rho squared raised to negative three halves. And my dv, my dv, it's very important. You have a crazy looking expression for dv. It's rho squared sine phi d rho d theta d phi. Okay. My rho ranges between one, two. Sorry, one, two. Between one and two. I said two, I wrote theta. <laughs> So one to two. My theta range is between zero to pi over two. And my phi range is between zero to pi over two. Let us try to simplify that. We can cancel out two and two. Rho to negative three. Rho squared gives you rho to negative one. So here you have integral zero to pi over two. Integral zero to pi over two. Integral one to two. Rho to negative one sine phi d rho d theta d phi. Here you have six boundaries. There is no uh, dependence between phi and rho, so you can separate these integrals. You have integral zero to pi over two. Pi over two is my phi, so I'm going to write down sine phi d phi. Then I have zero to pi over two d theta. And then I have my integral one to two rho to negative one d rho. Let us calculate each of these. So we have the integral of sine phi is your negative cosine phi zero to pi over two. And here you have theta ranges between zero to pi over two. And here you have ln of absolute value of rho one, two, two. So if I plug in pi over two, it's going to be just zero. If I plug in zero, I get negative one, negative pi second, it's going to be to the new one. And here I have pi over two. And here I have ln of two minus ln of one, which is ln of two. So the outcome is pi times ln of two divided by two.